Hello, Jasmine Harding here, and what I'm talking to you today is about the parasitoids of the marsh fritillary. Here we can look at a marsh fritillary caterpillar. It has attempted to pupate, that won't happen, because it carried within it the larval stage of the wasp Cotesia bignelli or Cotesia melitarum. And this wasp specialises on the marsh fritillary. In fact, Cotesia bignelli has no other known host. And what you're looking at here is the wasp grubs which have bitten their way out of the caterpillar and are spinning a dense, dense white webbing, silk webbing. And within this, they will pupate. They'll form their own cocoons. And the purpose of the webbing is to ensure that they last longer than usual. The pupae have to last longer than usual because if the wasp hatched in two weeks, there will be no marsh fritillary caterpillars to infect. The butterfly will be on the wing, there will be eggs on devil's bit scabious, but there'll be, there, they have no way of infecting adults, eggs, or indeed pupae. They can only infect the larval stage. So the webbing will delay emergence for up to six weeks, by which time the next generation of marsh fritillary caterpillars will be available for infection. This looks very grim and grisly and cruel and it's pretty tough on the poor caterpillars that are infected. And one of those wasp species infects um, single generation of caterpillars three times. They infect them in July when they're newly hatched. They infect them just before they hibernate. They overwinter inside the caterpillars and in they, they emer kill those caterpillars in spring and they infect the later stages of the marsh artillery. So poor old marsh artillery suffers very badly from this issue. But if it didn't, the population might reach such a level that they will defoliate their food plants before the caterpillars are fully grown, resulting in mass starvation. So this does have a purpose. It does play a role in regulating the population of the butterfly. Occasionally, the population of the wasp gets so great that it wipes out the marsh artillery population from a site entirely thereby wiping itself out and the site requires repopulation from an adjoining site as long as of course there is an adjoining site to repopulate and the marsh fritillaries aren't very mobile 15 kilometers seems about the limit of their um, their powers of flight as far as we know and that's as based on current knowledge so it's important that landscapes don't become fragmented or um, this colonization ability isn't disrupted by fragmentation otherwise the population extinction in a site would be permanent so I'm going to leave you with this rather sad site but it is an interesting part of the Marsh Artillery story